going into round eight of the Grand Slam final. Caruana and Carson were sharing the lead, but Aronian was just behind, and he had a great opportunity to catch the leaders up as he was playing Vallejo, currently at the bottom of the tournament table. What could Aronian do? He was playing with the black pieces, and instead of playing his standard Berlin defence in the Spanish, he wanted to try and keep more tension, more juice in the position. So he played a modern defence, a very tense opening, but it did not work out well. You, we joined the game after 19 moves, where you can see that things have worked out beautifully for the Spanish player. He's got two bishops, he has a commanding center, and black hasn't been able to touch this at all. So Aronian already in some trouble. Well, when you command the center like this, then there's an obvious plan. You're able to start attacking your opponent's king, and that's exactly what Vallejo did. He played h4 with the simple idea of h5, and then trying to get a rook over, and the king is actually already at the end of the h-file, so this is a natural attacking plan for white, very simple indeed. Aronian has to respond very quickly, because really the plan is so simple for white to play. Okay, he started advancing on the queen side. By the way, he can try to push in the centre, but for example, d5 would simply be met by e5, and then you just get a fantastic French-type position, and of course this would open up the diagonal here. So it's very difficult for black to try and create counterplay in the middle. Okay, a5. Vallejo continued with h5. a4, and the bishop just came back to c2. Well, these pawns could be useful later on, but it's very theoretical at the moment, and white centre has not been touched. Okay, finally Aronian makes a break in the middle and okay things are starting to happen but it's very slow indeed. Now how should white react to this? Well if you take then that would open up the d, d file, there's no point in that at all, that would give black counterplay. You could play d5 to try to keep the position closed, now that is possible but I think that would give black counterplay in the middle. For example, if queen takes, then knight b6 gives some counterplay. The knight could come in here, for example. Or pawn takes, and well, a3 is, is quite a useful move, actually. Now we can see the point of this advance try to weaken this c3 pawn, and you never know, later on there might even be a chance to, to get in f5 with some counterplay. So this is, it's not so clear, I'm sure white is better here, but things are starting to, to stir there. So I think Vallejo played very sensibly here. He just continued with his plan. I mean, black's counterplay in the middle is not so strong, so king g2 is very strong indeed, just with the idea of rook h1. Okay, what about d5? At first I was I was commentating live on this game and I thought well maybe d5 but actually this is dreadful because it opens up this diagonal and in fact white wins straight away with this move and if the bishop is taken we've got rook h1 that's the end of that. So instead Aronian just took on d4 and Vallejo recaptured, and now c5. Okay, so he's tr Aronian is desperately trying to create some trouble in the middle of the board. And now you could close the position with d5. Um, I mean, perhaps it gives black a little something to bite on with knight e5. Uh, but I think this is also good for white. Well, for example, you could play b3 to stop knight c4. I think white is better here, but okay, it's not so clear. Things are beginning to open up a little bit. So again, I think Vallejo played the strongest move. He did, wasn't concerned uh, about stopping black's play in the middle, because it's not so threatening, and just continued with his plan. And this looks really, really nasty with the king sat on h8. So Aronian captured on d4. 
I should say that both players were running, starting to run very short of time here, actually. Particularly Vallejo, but actually Aronian was starting to catch up, particularly after the next moves on the board. Um, no, sorry, Aronian was actually very short of time, but yeah, Vallejo started to catch up. Beg your pardon. Okay, now this is actually quite a critical moment because Vallejo can choose whether to go for a direct attack on the king or whether to play more calmly and positionally through the middle. Who knows, maybe a Karpov would have taken on d4. I think this is a very sound continuation for white. For example, if bishop takes bishop, queen takes knight e5. Now, f4 is impossible or inadvisable because of queen takes bishop, check. But instead, I think white has a very strong move here, a very simple move, bishop d3. Now f4 is a threat. If g5 to prevent f4, then bishop takes b5, and that's a clear extra pawn for white. And knight comes into f5. I mean, white is in control there. Or queen c5. Well, an exchange of queens isn't so clear, and if we try to take here, then there's counterplay. But I think now a very cool move indeed for white. I really like bishop e2, a very simple move. The point is that now that g4 is protected, f4 becomes possible. And if g5 to prevent this, then the knight comes to f5, and white has a tremendous position here. I think, you know, white has such a simple plan to play for example, doubling on the D file, for example, and D6 is going to fall very soon. And, you know, I really like White's pawns on the king side. You know, Black's king is so poorly placed here. Um, well, not just for the middle game, but for the end game as well. So I think that would be a very steady way for White to play, and with a, with a huge advantage. But who can blame Vallejo? He sniffed a chance to attack black's king and he went for it. He played h takes g6 and this is such a tempting move. Of course the bishop can't be taken because this is checkmate. So Aronian had to recapture. And now rook takes pawn check. This is such a tempting continuation and it looks as though white is winning straight away with rook h1 check. And now Aronian finds a series of only moves to keep him in the game. I mean, he did remarkably well, even though he was running very, very short of time. So that's the first only move, and of course white takes it. So white is only the exchange down in this position, and yet he has a blistering attack against the king. Now, the moves were really flying at this point. They had to get to move 40. They still had 12 moves to make, and they were down to just a couple of minutes. At first I thought that white was winning straight away. Um, for example, if king g8 trying to get out of trouble on, on the h-file, then white takes, and now a very simple sacrifice actually, knight f5 check. Well, rook takes f5 is probably best for black, although white is still winning. But let me just show you what happens on pawn takes. The queen comes in and it's mate straight away. So going back, black is really on the edge here, but Aronian found the only move, rook h8, so it allows some kind of discovered check. Well, if white is feeling um, like he wants to get some material back, of course he can play bishop g5 and then take on d8, but this is nothing special. I mean, black is, is no material down here, it's just, it's fairly even actually. So, no, I mean, this, this isn't why you sacrifice a rook on, on h7. Um, at first, I, I mean, I, I wanted to play this move knight f5 again, and I thought this might be winning. For example, after pawn takes, I wanted to play queen g5. And this looks absolutely crushing, because it, you know, we're, we're just going to get a checkmate, you know, here. Using, using queen and rook, the, 
as I, as I tell the kids who I teach, there's a laser beam checkmate on the H file. But this counterattack is deadly, actually. Um, well, the king can come back, but white has no more than the draw. But if white plays for a win with king g3, then this counterattack is actually winning. For example, king takes, and now it's black's turn. And you throw this one in, and throw the knight in, and now the queen comes in, and basically, well, this is leading to mate. So, knight f5. The other thing with knight f5 is maybe just playing pawn takes. Now, white is a whole rook down here, but the idea of course is to bring this bishop into the game, but it seems as though black's defences hold strong after king g8 and there's no way through. So the obvious tries don't work, um, and then we were looking at this and there were lots of suggestions online, you know, how should white continue, and this one looked obvious to break open the diagonal, at diagonal for the bishop. This looks absolutely terrifying and suddenly Vallejo played this move and you know great you know he's on the attack again this looks so natural. So this adds more fuel to the fire of the attack. Aronian captured. Now again I, my first thought was great bang the knight in but it seems as though black is well more than okay in this position he's a rook up and there seems to be no way through. So knight f5 wasn't working, the obvious tries don't work, but very coolly Vallejo played bishop e4. Now it's incredible how well both players played this this final phase of the game in spite of being so short of time. Aronian now played d5. Now he could have perhaps played king g8 there, but okay, I think d5 is reasonable. And then quick as a flash Vallejo took on g6. Well, why is he taking on g6 now, not in the other position? Well, we can see why after knight takes bishop, and now, instead of the pawn on d6, the pawn is on d5, which allows this deadly discovered check and wins the queen. So, very clever idea, tempting this move d5. So the king came back to g8. Ronin found the only move. And now, okay, Bishop came back, it was on prise, and this looked very strong again. I mean, all white's pieces are attacking. His king is pretty safe on g2, and suddenly we've got bishop e6 coming. Aronian found the only move to continue in this position. Rook d6, covering e6, and threatening the bishop on h6. So, Vallejo took, and queen takes... Now knight h5, and this still looked terrifying for black. You know, his pieces are split. If the, the queen moves, let's say, I don't know, queen e7, then, well, white could follow up with a simple move like queen takes d4, and, well, I think the odds on black surviving this are, are pretty slim, actually. But a brilliant counter-attacking move from Aronian. His queen is on prees, but... He didn't bother defending it. He played knight c4, attacking white's queen, but also trying to come in on the e3 square. And suddenly the game has swung round. Vallejo is suddenly under pressure. If, for example, queen f4, which looks at first sight pretty good, then queen e5, an exchange of queens will of course benefit black greatly, and if queen check, the king is reasonably safe on f8, and then it's black's turn. Then it's Black's turn to counterattack. Vallejo found a brilliant defence. Bishop e6 check. Extraordinary. Leaving a bishop on prise. The point is this. That after rook takes bishop. By the way, if king f8, then queen f4, and then we take the queen. So, Aronian took the bishop. And now, Vallejo went for the exchange of queens because he's managed to put the rook on prise here. And after all this, after all these tactics, this, these complications, finally an equal ending had been reached. This was actually move 40, the dust had settled, and they exchanged pawns, 
and reached a drawn end game. And well, the game continued for a few more moves, but you can see it's completely drawn. I think it was a brilliant game, actually. I think Vallejo was really enterprising with his attacking play, really inventive. I love this idea of bishop e4 and then bishop takes g6. But I have to say, Aronian's defensive play, when short of time, was extraordinary. He didn't falter. It's so easy to make a blunder in, when you're under such pressure. So, the tournament standings haven't changed. Carlson and Caruana are still at the top after round eight, and Aronian chasing just behind. Two more rounds to go. The tournament is wide open.